I've created a basic 2D project into which I've created a Node 2D scene called World. Um, I have a sprite for my background. I have a static body 2D for my ground layer and into which I have a collision shape 2D which has this uh, rectangle shape underneath it. This starting point is available in the links below to download. In the project settings, I have defined the width and height as being 320 by 180. I have the text width and height of 1280 by 720. And in the stretch mode, I have it set as 2D and aspect is set as keep. In the input map, we need to add new actions. For move right, move left, and jump. These we set as keys. Like that. Into our world, we are going to add a kinematic body, which we're going to name player. And we are going to make that a new scene. We're going to create a new folder called player and save it in there. Opening this up, we're going to give it a sprite. Into that sprite, we're going to use our adventure style sheet. Into the animation, and we need to set the H frames and V frames. Thirteen and thirteen. We're going to change the position of the sprite to 1 on the X and negative 15 on the Y. We then add a collision shape. With a new capsule shape, which we position over the player. We then add an animation player. Create a new animation called Idle. We set the duration to 1.3 seconds and make sure that it loops. Also, make sure the snap is at 0.1 seconds. We're going to keyframe the animation frame, which adds a new track. And then we're going to move across, incrementing it by one each time for a total of 12 times. Next, we're going to create the run animation. The run animation starts at frame 13 in this sprite sheet. And the length is 0.8. This also needs to loop. Next up, we need an animation for jump. The jump animation on this sprite sheet starts on frame 65. We add a keyframe, move it across, increment the keyframe, and do that until we get to that point there. The length of this animation is 0.6 and it does not want to loop. We're now going to add a script to the player. Simply click on the player node, attach a new script, call it player.gd, and then replace this with uh, this code. We give it a class name of player. We need some variables. Uh, these are obviously used within the scripts themselves. I find it easier to have them on the player object, simply so you can reference them. Uh, also, these values work nicely for me, but you feel free to change them. We're also going to define a function to get the input direction. This is going to return a float value. The direction is being pulled back from the input strength from move right and move left, which we simply return. This function is also going to handle swapping the sprite over since we don't have left and right animations for the specific uh, run and jump. So depending on the direction, we're going to uh, flip the, the sprite 
true or false. While in this area, we're going to create a new script. We're going to call it state. We're going to replace the code with a direct copy paste from the excellent GD Quest tutorial. We then need another script for state machine. Again, which is copy paste. And finally, one more script for player state. Don't forget to save all. Back to our player node, we're going to add a new node of type state machine. Into this new node, we're going to add a new child node. of type player state, which we rename to idle with a right click and extend the script. This gives us a blank player state script which we can put our state uh, controls into. Idle is pretty easy. We simply need to know a path to the animation player, which we are then going to instantiate. We're going to extend the enter function and say that when we enter this state, we are going to play the idle animation. Within the physics update state, uh, we are going to transition to the air state if the player is not on the floor. So we are simply uh, going to lerp the velocity, the left right velocity, to zero based on the player friction. And we're also going to uh, move the player in that direction. The last thing we need to do is to be able to transition out of this state if uh, we do something else. So if the action pressed is jump, then we're going to transition to air. And this passes an, a, an object that basically says jump. The other thing we need to do is make sure that the player input direction is not approximately zero. Because if it is, then we are going to transition to the run state. To create the run state, back to the state machine, click on add, click on player state, rename it to run and extend the script. Replace the boilerplate with the same sort of setup as we had before, except obviously in this uh, enter function, we're going to be playing the run animation. In the physics update, similar to before, if we're not on the floor, we're going to transition to air. If the uh, player input direction is not zero, then we are going to lerp the player velocity in that direction based on their speed and acceleration. We also need to add in gravity and move and slide the player velocity in that direction. If the player presses jump, we need to change the state machine to be air and obviously passing it into it that do jump is true. And if the player is not um, pressing any direction, then the state machine is going to transition to idle. Lastly, we need to create a new state for air, which will be a player state, which we rename to be air and extend the script. Clear out the boilerplate, put in the no path for the animation player. And then we add in our enter method, uh, which checks to see whether or not the message has that do jump uh, parameter as part of it. If it is, it's going to push the velocity y for the player um, in the negative direction based on the jump impulse variable. And we're going to play the animation player uh, jump animation. In our physics update, uh, we need to check for the player input direction. If the player input direction is not zero, then we are going to lerp the player velocity x in that direction based on their speed and acceleration. If the player is not pressing uh, left or right, basically, then their x velocity is going to be lerped towards zero based on the air friction. It's totally possible to use the same friction value here on the actual player uh, as you have for the land version of this, but I prefer having it as a separate variable so that you can fine tune it.
then we simply add in our gravity and we move and slide the player in that direction. Then all we have to do is handle our transitions out of this state. So if the player is on the floor, then they have landed. If they're not pressing left or right, then we're going to transition to idle. Uh, otherwise, we are going to transition to run. Remember to save all the scripts. Next thing we need to do is link up all of our uh, exported parameters. So into the state machine, our initial state should be set as idle. Within the idle state, the animation player needs to be set as the animation player. Same for the run. And for the air. And save. Jump back into the world. Find the player and position him somewhere near the ground. And save. When you run the script, you should see your uh, player sprite animating in its idle state. When you press right, he runs to the right. And when you press left, he runs to the left. Jump should also work in roughly the same way. Uh, now go back and feel free to fine tune the variables to make this feel and look exactly as you want. And that's it for this tutorial. Thanks very much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, please give it a like and consider subscribing. I do intend to actually extend this and do some slightly more advanced stuff with these uh, state machines. Links for all the assets will be down below, as will be the, uh, the GitLab links, so that you can just download the project um, both at the start and end states. Thanks very much, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.